A little bit of a midterm update here for you. Uh, interesting uh, new details about some honestly quite surprising fundraising issues that the Republican Senate uh, candidates are having in particular. Let's put this up on the screen. So they say the Senate GOP campaign arm slashes TV ad buys in three states in a sign that fundraising trouble is taking a serious toll. A key political committee cancels ad plans in Arizona, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Uh, the National Republican Senatorial Committee, they have cut now more than $5 million in Pennsylvania, including their reservations in the Philly media market. Um, they've also slashed reservations in Wisconsin in the Madison and Green Bay markets. Those have been curtailed by more than $2 million. In Arizona, all reservations after September 30th have been cut in Phoenix and Tucson. That is the state's only two major media markets, amounting to roughly $2 million more. So far, around $10 million has been canceled as of midday Monday, though more changes to the fall reservations were in progress. Now, in fairness, um, the response from the Republican Senatorial Committee was basically like, look, we're not canceling these, we're moving money around, we're sure. reallocating whatever. But um, if you look overall, it's pretty clear that they've pulled back from the amount that they are mm -hmm. spending in these states and in these media markets. This comes on the heels of another report that we had covered here as well that showed that the total amount of online donations to Republican candidates, direct can so not to the senatorial committee, but directly to the candidates, has actually been falling. So it fell by more than 12% uh, in the second quarter compared with the first quarter, according to an analysis of of Win Red, that's the main online Republican fundraising platform. And that's very unusual. Usually as you get closer to an election, online donations go up and up and up. So the fact that in the second quarter they saw them fall off was quite significant. Republicans said, well, it's inflation, it's a bad economy, so of course our people are getting hit. However, Democratic contributions at the same time surged, and Democrats are living in the same country with the same economy. Their uh, contributions on Act Blue jumped by more than 21%. So I suppose when you look at this entire picture, it seems pretty clear that they're having some fundraising struggles. And to tie it back, Sagar, to what we're talking about with Trump potentially announcing for president before the midterms, part of their issue is that he sucks up so much of the yes. online fundraising. Right. Um, he's a total pig <laughs> when it comes to like, you know, he's super greedy. Doesn't They're dole it out. Abusing, yeah, doesn't dole it out. Really h hitting those fundraising lists over and over and over again. And has so centered the party around the person of himself that, yeah, that's where the grassroots base is overwhelmingly giving. And you can only imagine that if he does announce for president before the midterm election, that's only going to, you know, only going to exacerbate some of the fundraising issues that the rest of the party is having right now. Yeah, and actually Politico had a story out this morning where they say that the midterm election campaign and the NRSC's decision to cancel millions of dollars is actually also a commentary on the inability of states like Ohio, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina to raise enough money. So essentially what they're saying is that J.D. Vance, uh, Doug Mastriano, and um, sorry, Doug Mastriano and Dr. Oz, and also in North Carolina are not raising enough money on their own. And so they need to be able to pull money away from other states and slash budgets so that they can bombard the airwaves. Yeah. And this has never well, happened before. It's also the case that they shouldn't have had to spend money in Ohio. Right. I mean, Ohio should have been in Gimme. They right. shouldn't have had to worry about that state. They're having to worry about, you know, they're having to pour more resources into a place like Georgia that also, frankly, in a year like this, should have been mm -hmm. a Gimme, even with an incumbent Democrat in place right now. So the fact that, you know, their candidates have dramatically underperformed, both in terms of their positioning with the electorate, but also in terms of their fundraising ability, has put them in a bit of a squeeze. Um, I think also the fact that a number of these candidates have no electoral experience. So they haven't built out they haven't done fundraising before. And just like anything else, political fundraising is a skill. It takes time to learn. Um, it really sucks having, you know, being someone who dialed for dollars uh, long ago. I can tell you <laughs> it is no fun to do whatsoever. Um, but it takes time to, like, build out those specific political donor networks. And so if you have all of this slate of brand new candidates who have never done this before, you know, there are other advantages to having outsiders who don't have a sort of, like, electoral track record in that baggage – 
But one of the downsides of um, of going with these sorts of candidates is they don't have uh, established sort of networks and established abilities in fundraising. And I think that is a drag on them. That's right a now. point Kyle Kondik made. I think yeah. it's an excellent point. You know, at the same time, Democrats are <laughs> washing cash, uh, like a lot of cash in many of these specific states and are hitting Republicans where it hurts. Really interesting story here. Let's put this up there, which is that in all of the battleground states, Democrats are going all in on abortion in terms of their messaging, as basically we predicted here on this show. And given the results of what happened in Kansas and in many of the special elections that we have now seen, it seems like a good choice. And you'll see there this four different screenshots from ads. In Arizona, blanketing the ad space in Blake Masters, who had previously alluded to wanting a national ban on abortion. I think he's going to come to regret that one in terms of his messaging. Tudor Dixon, who is the so-called you know, moderate nominee, she has said previously she doesn't want any exceptions for rape or incest in an abortion law, and they're, of course, putting that and highlighting that. Doug Mastriano specifically saying in May, quote, my body, my choice is ridiculous nonsense, and they're calling him Doug Mastriano, make all abortion illegal, and even in Alaska, saying Alaskans should have a right to choose. Alaska being probably a much more kind of libertarian type state, but really, it just shows you that across all of these states, all swings, all of them are immediately picking on abortion as their top issue that they're spending money. That Apparently, even with uh, Michigan and Tudor Dixon, they're not talking about election conspiracy, nothing. It's just all abortion. Georgia, they're doing the same thing. And Arizona and, in, yeah, Arizona and Pennsylvania, I think, are going to be the most significant given. Arizona, of course, is a conservative state, you know, but also went for Biden. But as I alluded to, you know, are going to have a little bit more of a libertarian ethos, Pennsylvania also, I mean, a true actual swing. And that is where a place like that to say actually no exceptions whatsoever. That's just, you know, look, no matter how you feel, in terms of public opinion, that does not track with public opinion. Yeah, so, that is know, a, it's an, an issue. Ex extremely fringe view. Yeah, yeah and, and the case that they're making, um, the sort of like broader portrait they're trying to paint is like, you know, look guys, you might not be thrilled with the Biden administration and how the economy is going right now. But these people are crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, they are out there. They are way too extreme. They are sort of ideologues and zealots. And so abortion is the entree to making that larger case that, you know, these candidates are, are way too out of the mainstream for you to ultimately elect. Just to give you some of the numbers on this, because I do think it's really interesting, Democrats um, have spent nearly eight times as much as Republicans on ads talking about abortion. Oh. $31.9 million just this far spent on abortion ads compared with $4.2 million on the Republican side. And in the closest Senate and governor's contest, Republicans have spent virtually nothing countering the Democrats offensive. Now, um, I've seen Democrats make this mistake in the past where they're getting hit on an issue that they're taking on water. I think CRT is a good example yep. of that. And they just try to like, let's not talk about it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Like you have to respond. You have to give your side of the story. You have to lay on, no, here's what my actual views are. Here's why that's wrong. Or here's why I believe what I believe. Just sort of staying quiet on this and hoping it goes away, I don't think is going to be a good strategy here. And a lot of what they're doing in these campaigns is they're using these abortion ads as like the opening message. Yeah. So to define these candidates out of the gates as like, these people are extreme, and then they move on to whatever the broader case is that they ultimately want to make. Um, I thought it was interesting that I quote here from uh, Anna Br Greenberg. She's a Democratic pollster, but the way she phrases it is, rarely has an issue been handed on a silver platter to Democrats that is so clear cut. It took an election that was going to be mostly about inflation and immigration and made it also about abortion. And the polling at this point is really clear that there was a shift after the Dobbs decision. And this is a very different race than it was before the Dobbs decision. The generic ballot is basically tied. You have a much better chance of Democrats being able to hold on to the Senate. I still would maintain, given how the polls have been biased um, against Republicans and in favor of Democrats, that Republicans are still very much the favorite, that the landscape still very much favors them. But um, Democrats, in a rare act of political intelligence, have done a few things that have given them a long shot 
chance to have a better yeah. midterm than was previously expected. Yeah, I think that's right. So, although it doesn't take a genius to figure this one out, looking at polling data. <laughs> but yeah, listen, that hasn't stopped them before. Yes, so they have, you know, yeah. in the past gone out of their way to do the dumbest possible right. things. So um, we'll give them, we'll damn them with faith praise here. Okay, and uh, this is a little bit of a look at why the Republicans are having some issues here because I continue to maintain this election, when you look at it, like the further you step back and look at the macro, you know, oh, the economy, inflation, wrong track, right? Biden's approval numbers, the more you're like, oh, Republicans are going to just clean up. It's going to be a shellacking. And the closer you zoom in at the actual races and the actual candidates, the more you're like, oh, this is not going too well. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.